Okay. So you were just currently calling. I have ignored it for now because it is a very inconvenient time for you to be calling because it is 1141 at night and I'm about to go to bed here after I make this video. Now, and you're calling again. Bring your silence. Now, here's the thing. Your text message that I ended up getting says, and I quote, I am taking full and complete irrevocable ownership of you on the 21st of August. Your role is motherhood and serving your master. Do you understand? You will be you have some bad grammar. You will be ownership insignia tattooed on the 22nd and each child you have will bear you each child you bear you will have a small tattoo with their name on. We will marry by specific license by the 28th. Your debts paid off. I will be content then and know where you are at all times and my penis will have its home. You will belong to me and you'd stay with me. You are property. Uh, that right there sounds pretty forced to me. And as far as I am concerned, I do not respond well to force. And to be able to sleep soundly through the night, stress-free, I've taken the battery out of my phone. I actually had to pull over and stay at my grandmother's for about a half hour, hour, in order to get over a panic attack, which you were the cause of. You have been causing me nothing but endless stress, endless panic attacks, because you're constantly demanding my attention, which right now, you're currently not physically in my life. I have obligations to school. I have obligations to family. I have obligations to not only legal matters, which involve my niece, but also to other matters that pertain to my friends and a possible job where I am a living babysitter. And if things continue to sour with you, I will take them up on their offer and be a living babysitter for them and their five-month-old Carl and their five-year-old Alex. In between which... Um, I will still be doing my school, which takes 20 hours a week of my time. First off, that's about three to four hours a day. Um, being that I'm ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactive disorder. My focus is very split all the time because I have no medication to keep it in check. I am controlling it or at least attempting to by myself because I don't like personality altering uh, medications. I absolutely abhor anything that likes to alter my personality or my physiology in any sort of manner. Now, you keep flipping. One minute you're this, the next minute you're this. You need to come to a clear decision of where you stand. This has nothing to do with me. I have made my decision. I have stood up to my decision. And you keep, A, assuming shit that isn't true. You do not have my mind. You do not have my soul. You do not have my heart. You do not have my body. You have no idea what I'm thinking. You have no idea what I'm feeling. And there is no way in heaven or hell or whatever you think exists that you could mysteriously know what the hell I'm thinking and why. You can't see me. You can't actually hear me. And half the time we talk on the phone, I can't hear you because you're so dang quiet. Now, my friend, I am extremely embarrassed by how today went because you decided to call me with all of this 
bullshit of, oh, you're doing this. Oh, you're doing that. When you have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, thinking, or feeling. Because I don't make promises I can't keep. When I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Unlike you who claims to think and do one thing and never change your mind, but your actions totally contradict your words. So unless you can get your thoughts straight, stop talking to me because I am tired of the stress and the bullshit that you put on me from going from one extreme to the whole freaking next. I understand the logic of everything, but because I don't know you, I haven't met you, I haven't seen you, I can't read your expressions, I can't hear the tone in your voice clearly by phone because I can't hardly freaking hear you. So I'm always having to sound like a freaking idiot, always asking, huh, what, all the freaking time. And it's really annoying. So (sighs) right now, you're not physically in my life. So my world does not revolve around you. As I said earlier in this video, I have other obligations that take up my time. I told you all throughout the week, even the week before last, that this weekend was going to be a busy weekend, yet you still insisted on calling me while I was in the company of my own friends, which they heard every single bit of the conversation that I had with you. They didn't hear you, they heard everything I had to say. So that was first off rude to them as they are the host, that was keeping me in their home for the weekend and I was doing babysitting for them. That does not show a really good business ethic, first off. Secondly, my friends, I'm starting to think that my friends are right. You say that online friends are not real friends. Well, excuse me, I have, all of my real friends are online. There's only like three or four friends that I have in real life that I can actually physically see person to person that I consider actual friends because everyone I meet in real life always betrays me, takes advantage of my kindness, or steals from me and then leaves me out to the dust. And that's something I don't tolerate. Someone does me wrong, I cut them off without a problem. That even includes millionaires. If you're gonna keep up with this wishy-washy bullshit, just leave me alone. I have no time for the stress and antics that you keep putting me through. I don't care. Your whole proposition is very good. It's very sound. And I like the idea. And I agree that there needs to be servants or slaves in a big home. I have said this. I am firm in that decision. As long as I do not have to do any sort of discipline, I will not have my freedom taken away. That is first and foremost, I will not have my freedom taken away. I will not have my life threatened. And if you decide to get any sort of vindictive or have a burr up your ass and send all of these goons from this quote unquote order after me, I will be forced to defend myself. And just because I'm fat doesn't mean I can't move. And I really, really, I'm starting to second guess this because you're the one who's being wishy-washy, not me. I am a firm person. I do make my decisions. I might not sound like I have a lot of expressions. I might not look like I have a lot of expressions, but there is a lot of reasoning to why I think the way I do why I feel the way I do, and why I do things methodically. Now, all of these random ass calls at late ass at night, I need at least eight to 10 hours of sleep for me to function physically and mentally because being borderline diabetic, if I have less than eight hours of sleep, I wake up and I'm starving and it's to the point where my stomach literally eats itself and my esophagus closes. So I at least need eight hours of sleep. So usually the latest, let's say I go to bed at midnight, I'll be up at eight, nine o'clock. I usually cut off at about nine hours, nine and a half hours, and I get up of my own accord. 
I no, no, I never really sleep longer than 10 hours. So, plus I have schooling I need to do, which I have lost an entire day. I have an assignment due tomorrow and I have not even worked on it and is the first step to my final project in this class. There are five steps to my final project. There's the planning and proposition. There's the outline. There's the outline and shading. Then there's final project with col final project step four with um, coloring. Then coloring and shading for a full final project that is to be completed with an artist's statement. So for the next two weeks, seriously, cut the calls to a minimum if you're going to call me at all if you decide to try and keep into contact with me. Secondly, if you're going to call, uh, let's see, you are, it is 11.52 my time, which is 7.52 UTC London, which if you're in France, that's 8.52, bordering on 9 o'clock. Now, let's say it's 3 o'clock my time, 8 hours ahead, puts it at 8 plus 3 is 11. It puts it at 11 o'clock your time. I don't know about you, but usually about two to three is an okay time as long as I have not had something else to do. For example, tomorrow I have to be up at seven o'clock in the morning, which I'm totally not going to get eight hours of sleep. And I have to leave the house by eight to be at court by nine because I am on the witness stand, which that will probably take up three to four hours of my day, which gives me very little time to actually do my assignment because I need, I, ha I have to do two hours of reading on my textbook a day and then whatever work, what, whatever time frame it takes for me to actually do my particular assignment, which can be anywhere from two to five hours. And that's because not only does my work take a lot of time, but I'm also working with a program I am not familiar with. So that is it on the school half. Now on the other half of obligations to family and friends, as long as I am living under my mother's roof, I have chores that I am obligated to do, like the dishes or the yard work, and that is to keep a roof over my head and food in my stomach because I have no income and cannot pay rent. That is how my life goes. In terms of other stuff, I have friends that really need help. My friend Rob is going to Afghanistan for I have no idea how long. That leaves Samantha by herself to watch over Carl and Alex. Samantha has to work to bring money into the house and her coworker is going on vacation. So she's going to have to take up her coworker slack, which leaves her two kids with no babysitter. I am the only trusted individual that they believe is good enough to watch their kids and their kids actually like. Thus, I am obligated, well not technically obligated, but because they are my friends, they have helped me a lot, they give me very great advice, I trust them with my life, my soul, every fiber of my being. I owe them. So... I am indebted to them. I will help them out when they need to because they have helped me when I have needed it. So I'm a person who gives and gets or gets and gives, whether whichever way it happens to play out. For example, I have a friend in Singapore who, despite all of his issues um, with his living situation, his poor job that he can't really... That he doesn't really like that treats him very crappy and a mother who is clinically insane and drives their family up the wall and everyone ends up attacking him he's strapped for cash and yet he takes time out of his day to listen to my problems and to even send me money when i don't even really ask for it i have told him he doesn't have to give me any money yet he gave me money anyhow he sent me 100 us dollars which might not seem like a lot to you however it's very meaningful to us lower folk because the bonds and the honest trust that people can gain on our little lower level might not seem like much, but it's very true. Money can't buy everything. And 
you have said that you have had a very hard life and you have managed to find the opportunities to get you where you're at now. You have taken the time to give me this opportunity in which I am more than willing to take and I would love to take it. However, you keep forcing words down my throat, forcing what you believe to be true down my throat, and that is something I do not appreciate. There are three types of people I in the world that I hate. I hate liars and thieves. I hate cowards. And I hate people that try and force their beliefs or their thoughts or assumptions down their throat as absolute law and truth. I don't know how it works in your country, but I know here in America, that's not really tolerated. So whatever you're thinking or assuming, just either believe it for what it's worth and do your own damn thing and leave me out of it. Or try and change your train of thought. People change over time. And that is an indisputable fact. Even with the people who don't like change, there are always minor changes. So you're 40 years old. You say you have all this experience, yet none of this experience seems to show on a very social level. So... My point is to either stop assuming shit as absolute law when you don't even know me or just to leave my life because morally I can do better. So either just leave me alone or stop being wishy-washy and make up your damn mind because frankly... I'm starting to agree with my friends. This is absolute bullshit and I would be sacrificing myself and my entire life for unhappiness. I mean, if you can't actually go without 24 hours without talking to me or calling me, you have said on various occasions that you would stop contact with me, yet you still continually try to call me. There was a couple weeks back you said that you were going to stop calling me for two weeks until I finished classes. You have not followed through with that. Your words and your actions completely contradict each other. So get yourself straight or get out of my life. Period. It's as simple as that. Good night.